as you see, Dale Gate 433 here. Um, trying to do this without the lights on, um, so hopefully the, the light will hold. So um, yeah, this is the next instalment, the fifth instalment in my uh, Lost in the Collection series. So um, I thought rather than theme this one, I would make it random. So I used a random number generator on my phone to pick the records from the list. So um, yeah, I got what I was given. Uh, so yeah, let's crack on before, let's say before the light goes. So of the five records, uh, first up is uh, Robert Plant and the Sensational Shape Shifters. I'll say that slowly because otherwise I'll get tongue twisted. Um, and uh, Lullaby and the Ceaseless Roar. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed this. Um, and um, yeah, I remembered it for some reason as, you know, Robert Plant doing a bit of kind of, you know, Eastern African world music and getting together sort of the appropriate musicians and, and sort of having a go at that. But actually, what, what I think it is, it's a good rock album, obviously incorporating um, a lot of those sounds and a lot of those 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 um, performers, but it, it, it doesn't tip over. It, it keeps the balance between a good rock album that incorporates that and doesn't tip into, if you like, a world music album. Um, so yeah, really, really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really strong. And what um, because I like the sound, you know, I couldn't tell you what any of the lyrics were, if I'm honest. The sound though was beautiful, just washed over me as, as it built. Um, so it kind of um, built up to, I think, um, and then kind of tailed off with a, with a ballad, A Stolen Kiss, which I really, really enjoyed. And then thereafter, the, 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 I say, the album just kind of washed over me and was really, really, really enjoyable. So, so that's that. Next up um, is 10 Years After, their album Cricklewood Green from 1970. This is, a, I think, a mid-70s press. It's not a gatefold, unfortunately. It's just a standard sleeve. But, um, yeah, so this 1970, I think, is a pivotal year. I think I've said it before. So this, and this is probably, you know, this this reflects that. So this is, I think, at its heart, a blues rock, an English blues rock album, if you like, or UK blues rock album. But it's got um, a bit of leaning forwards towards a sort of prog and a leaning back towards psych. And, and you can hear that in the album. Um, you know, the top first three tracks are really, really strong. Um, and then the on side two, um, there's a longish track, Love's Like a Man, Love Will Love Like a Man, um, which is also great. So, yeah, really enjoyed this as well. Um, got a kind of, I do quite like my English blues rock of that period. Next up, change of gear, is um, the Magnetic North and... Um, Orkney Symphony of, which is a bit of a concept album um, around Orkney. Um, so a lot of the tracks, you could title tracks, titles of the tracks could be places or um, aspects of um, the Orkney Isles. Um, and I remember seeing this shown by um, Kevin uh, Kip of the Serenes, who used to make videos um, quite prominently, quite a lot in the VC, but doesn't make them very often now. And but does post on Instagram, and I follow him on Instagram. Who I think is a is a postman up on either on Orkney or one of the one of the islands um, off, um, around Scotland. And um, yeah, he, he I think he's he think he knows or something to do with somebody involved in the album. So he talked about it, and it piqued my interest. So it's sort of modern folk chamber folk with say, a lot of orchestration going on some synth going on and i think the people the key players that i recognize erlen cooper i think has gone on to do other things um and hannah peel um the female singer and um instrumentalist in the um if i'm if i remember rightly i think she was involved in the last um sort of uh, live album that paul weller put out i think she um i think she either um conducted and arranged um the the music for that um so that last uh um live album that Paul Weller put out but um yeah really enjoyable um next is this Marianne Faithful Broken English 1979 um yeah so uh, I didn't enjoy this uh and if I remember rightly I didn't enjoy it when I got it so I mean I got it from a car boot sale it didn't cost me anything really um 
So yeah, I think you know the, the title track "Broken English" is is fine. Um, the ballad of Lucy Jordan, which was a single from it, I think is fine. It just doesn't really speak to me. I, I think it's you know this is Marianne Faithful coming back, so sixties pop starlet, um, uh, if you like, um, and made sort of twee folk pop um, in the sixties, and was the girlfriend of of Mick Jagger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, you know, has a hard period from then on, um, drugs and other things, um, drink and drugs and other things. As I understand um, this is a bit of a comeback. She's got, obviously got something to say um, and, you know, f f good honour for saying it. But it but but I, you know, didn't speak to me. Um, and it's also you know, the, the final track, Why Do You Do It, is, I think is famous for being, you know, fairly explicit, um, fairly hard hitting um, in its lyrics and it certainly was, but again, uh, it, it didn't speak to me. So um, it didn't land with me, unfortunately. So, um, and because of, you know, the, the singing style, some of the eighties synth style and all that, if, if I wasn't getting the lyrics, the sound certainly wasn't landing with me. It's a bit harsh, wasn't it? But never mind. Um, next, um, Mew. So Mew, I think they're from Denmark, should have done my homework. Um, so anyway, certainly a, a Scandinavian pop prog, I would call it, modern pop, pop prog. Um, fantastic packaging, again, heavy duty, really glossy. Um, uh, it's got some like South Park type figures on it. It's called Plus Minus is the album, or Plus Slash Minus. Um, it's got, you know, it's got inner sleeves as well, really quite good quality inner sleeves. Yeah, this is good. Um, it um, starts off well with Satellite, I think is the opening track. It's really quite a strong track, very good sort of pop anthem um, and, um, you know, closes strongly the final side. But um, it, yeah, it's um, it's like an hour, 10 tracks. So they're all quite long, obviously the average six minutes, but, you know, that, that there's a quite a lot of longish tracks. Um, and um, I remember seeing this again, this is a VC kind of, um, uh, I think Derek Higgins um, is, a, is a fan of Mew and he showed, if not, you know, this, if not, or if not previous albums, I haven't heard their previous albums, which are supposed to be stronger. Um, but this, um, yeah, they enjoyed this. Um, if, if, if I'm honest, um, I think they could have shaved a few minutes off some of the songs and made it a, a really good sort of 40 odd minute long album rather than an hour um so um but yeah nice packaging nice album so um yeah of the lots i think i would say that this was the most enjoyable and the one that kind of i went oh didn't realize it didn't remember it being that good um of all, of all of them um so yeah and uh i think as you probably guessed this one uh um yeah was uh, was not um that'll do what are we on eight minutes okay well i got through those pretty quickly do i talk about them all he says i think i did didn't i yeah got through those pretty quickly um so cheers vc i'll be back with another video soon i think it's about time i um i've got a few odds and sods of vinyl finds and, and the like that i probably need to just tidy up so i can file them away um so i'll do that maybe over the weekend cheers vc bye